Okay, today we're going to talk about the numbers and the decimal system. And I just want to quickly point out our learning targets. These are the things that we're really going to focus on as we go through this sequence of learning. So um, what one thing we're going to talk about is the counting numbers and their uses, and really the, the two views of the counting numbers. We're going to be able to explain and describe the relationship between place values and the decimal system. We'll touch on um, also calling that the base 10 system and why that's the case. We're going to describe how decimals fill a number line and really think about that word fill. We're going to apply precise rounding to a given place and we're going to discuss negative numbers as owed amounts and then we're going to be able to compare negative numbers as well. Um, and lastly, I just want to point out the three math practices that we'll be focusing on as we go through the entire semester. And those include making sense of problems and persevere in solving those problems, and that's a common core math practice and practice number one. We're also going to focus on practice number three, which is attending to precision, and my favorite math practice, which is math practice number six, and that is about creating viable arguments and critiquing the reasoning of others. All right, so we're going to start with talking about the counting numbers. So when we talk about the counting numbers, what we're talking about are the numbers that start with one. And so if you think about a toddler, when a toddler is learning to count, they simply count on their fingers like this, one, two, three. Those are the counting numbers. So remember, they just start with one. They're basically in the history of numbers, the development of numbers or civilization, basically our, our first set of numbers. Um, when we talk about cardinality, which is often talked about in context of counting numbers, we're really just talking about the number in a set. So if you look at the apples here, um, you might count one, two, three, four, five apples when you're counting those, but you would say that the number in a set is five. So we would say this helps us understand that there are five in that set. The problem with counting numbers, and this got erased a little bit, sorry. Um, the problem with counting numbers in English is that they don't always make perfect sense. And so anytime in these videos when you see a question mark like this, I'm just going to point out a possible misconception that students might have. And so one of those places is when counting the teens in English. So if you think about 11, 11 does not sound anything like 10 and 1 together. Think about 12. The word 12 does not sound at all like 10 and 2 more. So a lot of times when counting, students get confused, kindergarten, first graders, they get confused when counting in the teens because there isn't a lot of um, sense made in those actual words. Now some word, some numbers, of course, in English then make perfect sense. Think about 63, six tens, and three ones. So some do make perfect sense, but it gets a little confusing in the teens. So possible misconception to keep in mind. All right, so let's go back to the counting numbers and just talk really briefly about the history of numbers. So back to the counting numbers, typically numbers were just tallied like this. So you can sort of imagine what you might see on the side of a cave. Um, our ancestors keeping track of, say, sheep's and, sheep in the herd, sheep, yeah, number of sheep in the herd, or, or um, animals harvested on a hunt. So they might just tally the numbers here. And of course, we, know all, we all know this as 5, 10, 15, and 20. Um, Roman numerals tried to make that a little more simple, simplified by creating a symbol to represent a certain amount. So here, this symbol we all know of, this V symbol, represents 5. And it did simplify things. They actually created other Roman numerals like X, L, and M um, to represent other numbers. But it was still fairly cumbersome. Think about the number 100,000 and writing that in Roman numerals. It's still quite cumbersome and long. Same with the Egyptians. They came up with symbols like the heel bone, um, the lotus flower. They came up with those symbols to represent certain numbers, but again, it became like a long string of symbols. So finally, the decimal system came around, and it really simplified things, um, also called the base 10 system. According to this system, all we need are 10 distinct symbols or digits right here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and that's all that's needed in the decimal system. Because the unique thing about the decimal system or the base 10 system is that it's all based on a value of a place, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. Um, before, though, I go to the next board, I just want to point out whole numbers. So as systems of numbers basically advanced with civilization, whole numbers developed. And it wasn't until 800 AD, which is fairly late in civilization, that the development of zero came about. And we'll talk about that again in a little bit. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about 
place value. So the real key innovation to the decimal system is its use of place value. So place value is simply a, a quantity that a digit in a number represents. So increasingly large units in successive places to the left in a number, so if you look here, this will make perfect sense, um, such that the value of each place is 10 times the value to the right. So in other words, as we move to the left here, the value of each place is 10 times greater. So this place here has a value 10 times greater than the place here. This place here has a value 10 times greater than the place here. Um, this really helps us to understand numbers the decimal representation of this number, 1,234, we all know the 4 in this case represents the 1s, the 3, the 10s, the 2, the 100s, and the 1, the 1,000s. When we put that into our expanded form, what we're going to talk about right here, you're going to really see this base 10 system play out. So here we have 1,000, plus we have 200s, plus we have 3 10s and 4 1s. So really we have, if you think about it in groups, we have one group of 1,000, we have two groups of 100, so there's one group here, two groups here. We have three groups of 10, and then we just have four ones. So we have 1,000 plus 200 plus 30 plus 4, or 1,234. So yes, the decimal system, the base 10 system, is efficient. Absolutely, it's much more efficient than the other systems, the Egyptian system, the Roman numeral system, and of course the, the tally system. And it's very practical. But again, so again, misconceptions or possible confusion. Students must keep in mind, and we all must keep in mind, that the value of the place for every digit determines the um, value of the number. So a lot of times students get confused. If you were to give students a particular number, say 23, and ask them what the 2 represents, they may not remember that the 2 in that case represents two groups of 10s, and they may be confused about its place value. So keep that in mind. All right. Next we're going to talk about the place value process. So when we talk about the place value process, we're talking really about three steps that we need to undergo to really understand the organization of the place value system. First, we're going to form bundles um, based on that base 10 system, bundles of 1, 10, and 100. Then we're going to rebundle to ensure that at the most we ever have 9 in a bundle. And then we're going to record the number of each bundle. So if you see here with 37, we've got three bundles of 10, 10, 20, 30, and then we have seven ones. We do not have enough here to rebundle and add to our tens group. Um, a possible misconception here is with this zero. So everybody look at this, 302. Um, we know that this tells us the number of groups of that value. So we have three groups in the hundreds value. And sometimes students get confused right here when we show zero as a placeholder. This is just simply showing that we don't have any groups of 10 in this number. But it is a possible area of confusion for students. All right, so before we go on to the decimals, our rational numbers, just to quickly give you a visual on the number systems, we talked about the counting numbers starting with 1. And then we talked about whole numbers with the inclusion of 0. Think of this as a bucket filled with all the counting numbers. And we would take that bucket and we would pour it into this bucket. So the whole numbers include all the counting numbers plus 0. And then we would take the whole number bucket and pour it into the integer bucket. So an integers include all the counting numbers and the whole numbers. But now the integers also include our negative numbers. And then, of course, finally, our rational numbers include all the integers, which included the whole numbers, which also included the counting numbers. So that's why the size of the bucket is getting larger. Rational numbers also include our, our decimal places. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. So as we reviewed in the, last, um, in the last slide, that place value increasingly grows by 10 times as we move to the left. As we move to the right from the decimal point, so recall that this is a decimal point right here, then we divide by 10. Rather than multiplying by 10 as we go to the left, we're going to divide by 10 as we go to the right. So here we have a tenth, also known here, 0.1. Then our hundredth, we're going to divide that by 10, or take a tenth of a tenth then. A tenth of a tenth is a hundredth, or 0 0.01. And then again, we're going to take a tenth of this. So a tenth of a hundredth is a thousandth, which is, of course, 0 0.001. All right, so lastly, we're just going to talk about then how decimals fill, remember one of our learning goals, how decimals fill a number line. And so if we have our number line here from 0 to 10, you can see that if I just take this section from 2 to 3, 
and I expand that, I'm going to fill that section of the number line with my tenths. So basically I'm taking my units and I'm dividing them first into tenths, and that's what you see here. Divided them into tenths. That's why I'm going from two now to three. I'm filling up that section. Now I'm going to fill that section up again because I'm going to take my tenths and I'm going to divide them into hundredths. So I'm going to take this section from 2.2, 2 and 2 tenths, and 2 and 3 tenths, and I'm going to divide that, that up into hundredths. So that's what I've done here, from 2 and 2 tenths to 2 and 3 tenths, and I've divided it into hundredths. I'm filling up as I go. The number line continues to get full, and we could continue this process um, long um, after this board is Finished. I'm just going to do one more step. I'm going to take my hundredths and I'm going to divide them into thousandths. Thousandths. And that's what you see here. I went from 2 and 22 hundredths and 2 and 23 hundredths. So we're talking about tiny little values here. And I'm still filling the in between places on my number line from 2 and 22 hundredths to 2 and 23 hundredths. All right, so again, that's how we fill a number line with our decimals. So the last thing I want to leave you with is this thought. That remember, I want you to remember this, the act of creating numbers is a process. And it really underlies everything in elementary mathematics. So that's a good starting point for us. Thanks for watching.